What a fucking game that was on Wednesday. I didn't have enough time to do a proper review for the Milan game. These games are just coming in thick and fast at the minute and trying to juggle them around work is just proving absolutely fucking impossible for me. But although we've got the build up for Palace this weekend, what happened on Wednesday just can't be ignored. Confidence must be sky high after that game. Although that first half just seemed tailor made to test my fucking patience. I mean that first half when the, the, the half time was so went, I don't think there was a single Liverpool fan who wasn't like... What the hell just happened? I mean, we battered them, we fucking battered them for 40 fucking minutes. And then they go and stun us twice with like minutes to go before the break. I mean, oh my God. Look, I did see in my pre-match build-up video, we needed to bring our A game to beat this Milan side. But that first half was our A game. We took our eye off the ball for a minute or two and we got punished. Klopp has to take some responsibility for this, in my opinion. If Van Dijk needed resting, what's the, the priority really, Leeds or Milan? I mean, Kerb Ood. Not having Van Dijk back there really didn't help when the pressure was on. But having said that, we rallied. We were excellent again in the second half. But an emboldened AC Milan game was a hell of a game back instead of sitting back and taking it like they did for 40 minutes in the first half. And we were treated to an absolute fucking classic. Arguably the best group stage game any of us have seen since like Olympiacos. It seems every time we play Milan, it's an occasion now. I mean, two Champions League finals and now one of the most dramatic wins any of us have seen in the group stage of the Champions League. We really do have an interesting rivalry developing with these. And a good-natured one at that. I really can't can't wait to play them again at the San Siro. Hopefully we'll be allowed to fucking go though. I think you can never exclude that there will be some new disease, some new horror that we simply haven't uh, budgeted for or accounted for. But I have to say though, the way that we won the game, Jordan Henderson scored it from outside the box. I hate to say I told you so. For those who do watch my videos regularly, you'll have uh, seen it in the Jordan Henderson video, which I'll leave a link to below if you haven't, by the way. I do think our captain has an eye for goal from long range. He proved it against Chelsea. He proved it again against Milan. The problem with him is he just he just doesn't seem to have the confidence to try it more often than he should. And my theory as to why that is, is that it's out of play and it's safe, thanks to all the shit that he's taken online down the years. I mean, if the crybabies who didn't like him would have just shut the fuck up down the years. He might have had a go more often than he has done, and yeah, maybe he'll miss a few, but I think there's no denying now Jordan Henderson can score from long range, but sadly, Jordan Henderson doesn't do this because he probably goes into each game thinking... Well, for the last week or so, I've been suffering from this pain in the arse. But anyway, I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on the Milan game. It definitely was a fucking thriller, and in my opinion, the best group stage game we've seen since Olympia in 2005. But if you guys can remember a better one, by all means, I'm all ears, let us know below. Moving on to Palace now, and I have to be honest, I am actually excited for this game. They are currently mid-table, and you know, their results might not look great, but they're just coming off the back of a 3-0 demolition of Spurs, so their confidence should be high. And I have to be honest, there are some players in that team that we do have to worry about. Edward and Conor uh, Conor McGregor? Conor Gallagher are two players we're going to have to watch closely. Zaha might be an arrogant prick, but he's still a talented arrogant prick. And Benteke, yeah, I know, he's usually shite, but he is still an ex-player of ours who will have the motivation against us in particular, and he has shown that in the past. And even Nathaniel Klein's in there too, who I like, by the way. I thought he was a decent right-back for us. He just had the rotten luck of getting injured, which gave Trent his chance, who then went on to become arguably the best right-back in, in the world. Yeah, 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 yeah. But having watched some highlights of Palace's last three games, they cross me as a very physically impressive side. Not aggressive like Burnley and Leeds. They just have a fair few big, powerful and athletic players who have no shortage of skill as well. They're very impressive. They really are physically, they're very impressive. And also play some very impressive football. Conor Gallagher in particular just seems to be in the middle of absolutely everything when they go forward. And Edward was a real coup for them in the transfer window. He had a hell of a debut against Spurs. Zaha can't stand him, kicks off every time he's challenged, he seems to think he's he shouldn't be challenged or allowed to be tackled, he's, he's an absolute fucking gobshite, but like I said, he's a talented gobshite nonetheless, and as for Benteke, again, I know he's a load of shite, but I still remember those two goals he scored against us that time when he he, he first left us, and celebrated with Sacco like a pair of bitchy fucking schoolgirls, git, he is usually motivated against us, and it does annoy me by the way in football when ex-players do that, I don't like it, I didn't like it when Adebayo did it when he scored for City against Arsenal, or when Tevez did it for City against United, I mean look, I know that those are rival clubs and all, but I'm talking about the principle of it. If Raheem Sterling scores against us and do does that to the cop or Adebayo did against Arsenal, how do you think we'd fucking react to that? It's just a scummy, childish thing to do in my opinion. These players are paid hundreds of thousands a week to play football. They're idolised by kids. I I'm all for funny, cheeky celebrations and all, even sticking it to rival fans like Gerard did to Everton that time when he was younger. And even when Neville and Rooney did it to us, as much as it pissed us all off, and me in particular, like as much as anybody else. Th but that's fine. That's what we want football to be about. Even if we do have to suffer rival players doing it to us, every now and again, but to go out of your way to provoke fans who used to support you, fund and contribute to your millionaire lifestyle and celebrity status just because you left the club under unflattering circumstances, I mean... Fuck off. 
I mean, look, this, you should rise above that. You just should. I mean, you're, you're a, mo a role model to kids. That is just a fucking bitchy, shitty little thing to do. And it, it really grates me when they do it. But anyway, as much as we're going to have to watch out for Palace, I think they have more to fear from us. Milan will have emboldened us just as much as uh, them beating Spurs handsomely will have emboldened them, especially thanks to their new addition up front, uh, and Edouard. So I think we're in for a real treat of a game. So what's my predictions? Well, as for the starting 11, I think it's going to be Alisson in goal, Trent Van Dijk, Canati and Robbo at the back, Henderson, Fabinho and Keita uh, in midfield, and Salah, Jota and Mane up front. The reason I'm going for Canati is that Klopp's reason for dropping Van Dijk in the Champions League was that a Sunday, Wednesday, Saturday split week is a tough one and we have to rotate. Gomez and Matip played Wednesday, so Canati and Van Dijk will be fresh for this one. Also, given the physical nature of their front line, I think we'll need a physical presence to match them. We're also at home, so I actually think this is the perfect opportunity to give Canati his debut. I'm going for Henderson Keita in, in midfield because uh, we'll need an energetic team to, against this Palace side. And up front picks itself as Mane was rested against Milan, but Firmino's still out for now. The only thing one, that wouldn't surprise me is if Origi is given a start ahead of Salah, as again, Klopp seems keen to rest players this week, and he said in his post-match interview he felt Origi played really well. Hell, I like you. You can come over to my house and fuck my sister. As for the score, I'm going for a 3-1 Liverpool win. I'm also predicting Palace to score first too, by the way. I think we're going to have a real game on our hands uh, uh, this weekend, and we'll be rattled early by this emboldened Palace side, but I think we'll rally again and impose our quality over them, which we'll see as ju uh, just fine. But what do you guys think? Do you think I'm giving Palace too much respect, maybe? Do you think we'll wipe the floor with them? Or do you agree and think we're in for a real cracker like the Milan game? Also, if you don't agree with my starting 11 predictions or I, I have any injury information I might have missed, feel free to let me know below. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm a new channel at this point, so any and all interactions are very much appreciated. If you're already subscribed, thanks again so much. I am trying to get these videos out as soon as possible, but with, with these qu games coming in uh, quick and fast, plus juggling it with work, it was going to be a stretch for me to do a pre-match build-up and review for every single game, but I'll still leave no uh, stone unturned. If I can't do a full review, I'll put a brief one in my build-ups for the next game so you guys still get my thoughts and everything it does mean the world to me that you like it that you keep watching which is why i'm doing my best to get these out for you when i can again let me know anything you'd like to comment on below i hope that you enjoy the game tomorrow and i'll see you again after it take care lads and lasses ta-da